The Trace feature in Silhouette Studio is a really robust tool, and it's probably driven you mad a few times. I want to help you demystify it and get the most out of one of the most versatile tools in Silhouette Studio. My name is Kelly, and let's get clacking. We can open up the Trace panel in one of two different ways. Number one would be to go to the top left hand corner, select panels, and then go down to Trace, and you'll see it opens the Trace panel. And the second option is to click on the little toaster looking picture, fifth one from the top on the right hand side, and it says open the Trace panel, and it'll do the same thing. So typically when we're using the Trace feature, we're using it because we want to remove something or we want to create a file into a cut file so that we can actually cut it out of vinyl. In this case, what we would do is we would click on select trace area. Our mouse changes into a little crosshair, so we can then click down and drag across the entire image that we want to trace and then release it. And you'll see the part of the design goes yellow. Now this is the part that is registered under the trace that the Silhouette Studio sees, and according to the current threshold that we have, that is the part that will be traced. So as we can see, this is not what we want. We want more of it to be traced, so we need to increase the threshold. So we're going to the threshold slider, and we're going to be moving it up. And as you can see, the higher that the number increases on the right-hand side, the more yellow we see in the design, which means that the more amount of the design will be traced. So we want to increase this all the way up until every part of the design that we want is traced. At the bottom here we can see the three different trace styles. So if I select trace, every part of that yellow will have an edging of a cut line. It would trace the entire design and if we have to move the design away we could see the edge of the design that we want to cut and if we fill it with color, if we had to cut it out with plain vinyl that's exactly what it would look like. If we go back a step, we could then trace the outer edge, which would simply just get the outline of the butterfly, and it would have none of the trace on the insides. So it would just have the outside shape, which we can see there. None of those details on the inside were captured. And then lastly, if we select Trace and Detach, it will actually pull the white background away from the image. So it looks normal, but if we pull that away, we can see the edging of the butterfly is there, and it is now essentially a transparent PNG, or just the background part is transparent. But there are a few other options to the trace as well. So we mentioned the threshold, and if we look at the top, it'll show either a solid fill or an outline. Now, personally, I never use outline because it literally just shows the edge of what you're wanting to trace as an outline. So instead of seeing this as solid yellow color, it would literally just show it as an outline. As you can see, you can't really get too much of a sense of what will trace here. I'm sure there are applications that this would be useful. Personally, I haven't found any, so I haven't used this. Uh, I always leave it on solid fill. Despeckle threshold is essentially the noise of the image. Then what it does is it removes the isolated pixels. So if there are lots of little dots in the image, it'll try and reduce that amount and not capture as many of those in the trace as it would. Then we have the high pass filter. So this essentially just moves it from the outside or the outer lines in. And then scale is also quite important when it comes to, you can zoom in quite a bit when it comes to scale because that's when you'll see the difference. You can only really notice that on the edges. So here you will see the jagged lines of the pixels. This is an image that I've drawn on Procreate, but I've made the quality a little bit lower for it to be easier to work with in Silhouette Studio. So we can see the edges of the pixels. Now the scale will essentially change the edges of those pixels that we can see here. So it'll make it more pixelated the higher you go. If you have it going very low and the lowest it seems to want to go is four, you'll get a smoother edge. So if you're wanting something that's, that's a lot smoother, you would then go for a lower scale. Then at the top, because I have Business Edition, I have all of the features unlocked. So we have the Trace by Color. So if we just close this here, with the Trace by Color, you can essentially use the little dropper tool to pick up a color on your design and try and trace that. So in this case, let's try and trace the mustardy color of the outline. So if we click on Trace by Color and then we click on that part, it'll then recognize that color. All right, so we can then change the tolerance. So because I want it to be pretty much 
more of that orangey type color. I can then change the tolerance and it'll pick up more of the similar type colors. And then I can either choose single area or I can choose all areas. So it'll choose all of the areas where that color is present. And then I can use trace and trace and detach as well. It's nice to use if you have designs that you only want to pick up certain elements or if you want to trace them individually. Then we have one of my new favorites. Not that it's new, it's just it's I haven't played around with it too much, so it's the magnet trace. Now, the magnet trace essentially is it works like a smart trace. So if you want to crop out the background of an image, then you can use the magnet trace for that. So you click on the magnet trace and you can then start clicking on your design and you can see how it automatically tries to snap to the edges. So you can then do that there and then you click all the way around the image. So that's essentially what you would do. I mean, I'm not going to go around the entire image, but it would essentially, you could either then trace this or trace and detach the background for this. If you want a, a little bit of a better tutorial on that, I've actually done another video for Battle of the Machines where we went over the trace function and we took, I took a selfie and we cropped the background out of that selfie and it worked beautifully for that. I'll leave the link up in the description for you to take a look at that one. If you're finding this information helpful, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more tutorials like this in the future. I do lots of tutorials on Silhouette Studio features as well as craft projects that you may be able to do for various uses. I hope that you stick around for more tutorials in the future. Going back to the main type of trace, I very often see people have images that are a lighter color on a darker background. So they're not like this, they're inverted. The image would then look like this. This is actually how I designed the image with a black background and lighter colors. As you can see, the colors kind of mix a little bit better than the inverted colors. If you were to trace this, you can actually see how it wouldn't isolate the part that we want to trace correctly. I mean, there it does quite literally exactly the opposite. So we would need to edit this image in order to get the trace. So before tracing, we go to this panel here, the image effects panel, and we click on this one almost in the middle. It's called invert. So you select the image, bring the inversion all the way to 100, you click apply, then you go back to the trace panel, select trace area, and then you can see this is exactly the image that we were working with earlier. And you will then be able to get a perfect trace, and then you can click trace. And then if you wanted to, you can go back to the image effects panel and invert the image again. And then you would have the perfect image that you would be able to trace. So that's essentially how I trace things with a darker background that have a lighter image. It's quite simply just inverting the image and then putting it back to normal. That's quite simply in a nutshell, the trace function in Silhouette Studio. I find it a very versatile tool that you'll be able to use for many different projects. I find that I use the trace function for pretty much every project that I use, just purely because there's so many different things that you can do with it. It really opens up an entire new world of opportunities for things that you can do within Silhouette Studio. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate all of the support and I will see you in my next video. And remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.